Hey guys, Dan here with Vittertech, and with macOS Big Sur just around the corner, bringing a ton of design changes to the Mac ecosystem, you may be thinking of upgrading your performance as well, including your hard drive and your RAM. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you step-by-step -step how to do just that. Let's get into it. So my disclaimer before we get into all of this is that the steps that I'm about to show you work for 2012 iMacs and up. So if you go in with a CD drive, it might look a little bit different than it does here. So at the time of making this video, iMacs made from 2012 up to 2020, we'll be able to follow these steps. So to start everything off, let's talk about what you're gonna need to buy to begin. That's gonna include a hard drive to 3.5 bay converter, a solid state hard drive, of course, the RAM that you're gonna be upgrading, and then after that, you're gonna to need to buy a kit that helps you remove and reassemble the iMac screen. Because the iMac body is one enclosure, we're actually gonna to need to remove that screen to access anything inside. That kit's gonna include a cleaning cloth, two suction cups for the screen, a temperature sensor for the hard drive, adhesives to reattach the screen, and of course the wedge to remove the screen. All of those things are gonna be linked in the description down below, so feel free to check those out. So beginning with the RAM that you're purchasing, you can mix various sizes of RAM within your Mac. So that means if you already have two slots each with four gigs of RAM and you wanna add two more slots of eight gigs of RAM, that is possible. You'll just wanna keep them in pairs of two. So you wouldn't want say two slots with four gigabytes one slot with eight gigabytes, and then one slot with 16 gigabytes. You'd wanna do two slots of four and two slots of eight. But the biggest thing to consider when you are determining what RAM to buy is that they all have the same specs in terms of DDR3 and megahertz. And now changing the RAM is actually pretty easy. Start by unplugging your iMac, and after removing the plug, you'll see a small button on the inside of the port. Press that down with a screwdriver or something small, and it will pop open the RAM compartment. You'll pinch two pins on either side and the tray will open. Simply put in your RAM and then push the tray back into place. Put the door back on just by pushing it into plates, and that's it. So now once you log back into your Mac, you can just hit the Apple icon on the top left, hit About This Mac, and then if you go to the Memory tab, you'll be able to see all of your different slots of RAM and how much each one holds. If you don't see the Mac that you've installed, you may need to open the compartment again and just make sure that they're pushed in far enough. Next, we're gonna take a look at changing your standard manufacturer's hard drive over to a solid state hard drive. This one's a little more intense because we have to take the screen off and then put it back on. After doing this a couple of times, I can say it's just a little more intense than say putting on a screen protector. So the screen itself is assembled by just an adhesive between the body and the screen. So first we use the tools in the kit to cut it. Simply push the tool into the screen and slide it along the edge of the Mac. Do this all the way around. And now when you get to the top near the camera module, you wanna pull it out just a little bit to make sure you're not cutting through anything near the camera. Now, once you've done that on the top and the sides of the iMac, you're gonna pull out your suction cups and attach them to the screen. Place the suctions on the upper corners of the iMac screen and then pull the handles so they click into place. Next, try to apply even pressure as you pull the screen carefully off the iMac. The screen should come off fairly easily once the adhesive is cut. Now, once the screen is lifted, you can't take it fully off and that's because it's still connected by the bottom adhesive and a couple of wires. The first wire just pulls out of the socket simply. The second wire requires a latch that you flip over, and then you're able to pull it out as well. The last step to this is pulling the tabs located on the bottom of the screen that will remove the adhesive at the bottom. Once you've done that, you can remove your screen. 
Now a tip here, it's a good idea while your iMac is open to clean out your fans as the Mac doesn't have great airflow and can build up dust inside which is otherwise inaccessible unless you're taking the screen right off. To remove the hard drive, you're actually going to need to remove the speaker closest to it. Just unscrew both sides and move it over to the side. That will give you access to two screws on the side of the hard drive. Unscrew those and one more on the other side of the hard drive. And finally, disconnect the wire and you can pull the hard drive out. Take the hard drive and remove the screws on the left side. Next, you'll put those screws into the hard drive converter to make sure your solid state drive fits perfectly into your iMac. Next, push your hard drive into the socket on the converter and it should click into place. Turn the hard drive over and we'll screw it in place using four included screws. Next, we're going to apply the temperature sensor to the hard drive. This is what lets the Mac know if your hard drive is overheating. It's a feature that's built into Apple's standard hard drives. However, if you're replacing it, then you need to install this sensor yourself. Just stick it onto any available surface on the hard drive and then plug in the connector to the port on the bottom of the converter. After attaching the existing bracket to the side of the converter, you can bring it over to your iMac and plug the hard drive in. You'll find that the wire with the temperature sensor is actually a little bigger than the standard Apple hard drive, so you may need to twist it or move it around to get it to best fit in that space. Next, screw the hard drive in using the existing screws that you took out before. Now next we're going to prepare to reassemble the screen. So first you're going to want to remove the existing adhesives that are already there. You should be able to simply peel these off relatively easy. A tip that I have here is after peeling them off, Take an alcohol wipe along the edges of the iMac as this will remove any existing adhesive and allow your new adhesive to stick better. And next we're going to start assembling the screen. So in the screen changing kit, you'll find numbered adhesives along with instructions on placement. Carefully lining up the holes punched in the strips to the iMac, you can then remove the clear film and apply it to the body of the iMac. After applying the top and the side adhesives, now you're going to move over to the screen to apply the bottom. In this case, you'll do the reverse and you'll remove the white sticker and apply that to the screen as we're doing this reversed. Next, you'll peel the clear side of the film from the bottom of the screen and then you can attach it to the iMac. Once you've attached the bottom, you'll want to take a moment to plug the wires in that we removed in the first step. Once you've done that, before going any further, you may want to turn on your iMac just to see that the screen is in fact turning on. Finally, you can remove all of the other white adhesive sticks and then you can stick the iMac screen back on. Press the screen firmly together, and that's it. Once you've put your iMac back together with your brand new hard drive, now you're gonna need to install a new macOS operating system. To do that, you're gonna turn your Mac on and then immediately hold down the R key, which is gonna boot your Mac in recovery mode. It's gonna ask you to connect to the internet and it's probably gonna take a little while to load, but once it does, you're going to be able to hit reinstall Mac OS. And once you go through that setup process, it's done. Okay, so that's the whole tutorial. As mentioned before, I have links in the description to everything that we've used within this video. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time that I post something new. As well, remember to hit that like button because it tells YouTube that this video doesn't suck. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.